A man named Mark Therias was wondering aloud to his wife Agnes what if he shaved his mustache. Agnes replied that she couldn't remember him without a mustache, and was already accustomed to it. This evening, the couple was planned to meet with friends, so Agnes decided to go to the store beforehand. Mark shaved off his mustache after all, but when Agnes came home, she seemed to not notice any change in her husband's appearance, and showed no reaction. Mark was obviously confused, but remained silent as they were running late. As the couple headed out to their friends, Mark was still hoping that his wife would notice something unusual, but Agnes continued to pretend as if nothing had happened. When they arrived, Mark told his wife to go without him while he parked the car. Of course, he was very upset about the wife's inattentiveness. However, when Mark came to the friends, they too didn't notice any change in him. Everyone behaved as if he never had a mustache. Noticing that Nadia had a new haircut, Mark complimented her. Nadia thanked him, but said nothing more. Later, in the bathroom, he stared at his reflection in the mirror for a long time. When he returned to the table, Serge recalled a story from many years ago. Then, they had a vacation in a country house, and Agnes, contrary to safety regulations, turned the heating on full power. The following night, it happened again, yet Agnes denied that she was the one who did it, and continues to deny it to this day. On the way home, Agnes told her husband that she didn't like Serge's behavior, but Mark didn't want to discuss it. Agnes realized that her husband was upset about something. She asked him to stop the car and explain what was wrong. Mark outright stated that he shaved his mustache today and nobody even noticed. But Agnes still doesn't understand what he's talking about. To prove the husband wrong, Agnes called Nadia right away, waking her up and asking her if she noticed that Mark had shaved his mustache. The woman didn't understand what Agnes was talking about. According to her, Mark never had a mustache. Serge also confirmed this. Mark outright asked his wife why she conspired with their friends. Agnes didn't want to continue this crazy conversation. Mark took out a box of photographs to prove his point, but Agnes had already gone to bed. In the morning, she saw on the bedside table the album with photographs from their vacation in Bali in 2003. Looking in the mirror, Mark is trying to understand what is happening to him. Soon, he went to work and greeted his colleagues. Mark was shocked when they too didn't notice any changes in his appearance. Mark hopes that this is just a nightmarish dream. But alas, it's reality. Samira, Mark's colleague, noticed that he was acting strangely and asked if he had argued with his wife. When asked if she noticed anything, Samira didn't know what to answer. Because of this, Mark started smoking again, even though he had quit three years ago. In the evening, at home, the wife was watching football. That same photo album was still lying on the table. There's tension between the spouses, but Agnes tries to lighten the mood. However, when she smelled cigarette smoke, she didn't like it. Mark couldn't find his razor in any of the trash cans in the house. He was rummaging through the garbage bins until dawn to find it. Waking up his wife, he showed her proof that he had a mustache. Agnes called him insane, as those hairs could have been thrown away by any of their neighbors. Unable to bear it, Mark broke down crying. He doesn't know what to think now. Agnes has no idea how to help her husband, who's slowly going insane. She insists that she's never lied to him. The next morning, Agnes said that she wanted to call an acquaintance of hers, whose wife was treated by a good psychiatrist. Perhaps he can help them in this situation. Mark thought this was a good idea. The wife is confident that they will cope with this. Later, when Mark went to take a picture for his documents, he saw a police officer and showed her his two photos in one of which he had a mustache. The officer confirmed that she too saw the mustache. This is how Mark realized that his wife and friends are deceiving him. He didn't go to work, returning home instead. Agnes said she had arranged an appointment with the psychiatrist. Mark didn't tell her about the photos and offered to go out. They went shopping to choose a new jacket for Mark. The man ignored calls from his boss. After this, the couple went to a restaurant for dinner. Unexpectedly, Agnes asked the waiter to bring cigarettes. 
she genuinely didn't understand why the husband was looking at her so bewildered. Later, Mark told his wife that he would always be there for her. What he fears most is losing her. At home, Mark listened to the voice messages from his boss, Bruno, as well as from his father. He reminded him that they were expected for lunch the next day. Mark noticed that the Bali photos were no longer on the table. When he asked his wife where it was, she began to insist that they had never been to Bali. In the morning, Mark finally answered Bruno's call and asked why he was involved in Agnes's conspiracy. But Bruno didn't understand what he meant. According to him, Mark never had a mustache. Hearing his wife coming, Mark hung up. Bruno called back, but this time it was Agnes who picked up. Bruno told her about the conversation with Mark. Agnes thinks they shouldn't go to her husband's parents for lunch today. Mark agreed with this. Agnes called the parents and lied that Mark was busy at work. The husband also asked his wife to cancel the meeting with Serge and Nadia. However, Agnes didn't understand who he was talking about. Mark reminded Agnes that Serge is her ex-husband and Nadia is his Russian wife. Agnes continued to insist that she didn't know these people. Then, Mark asked if they were really going to meet his parents today. Confused, Agnes replied that they were only going to meet his mother because his father passed away a year ago. Mark doesn't understand why his perception of reality is changing. He decided to go to sleep, hoping that at least Agnes wouldn't disappear during this time. Agnes brought her husband a glass of water and medicine. Perhaps this is just a temporary clouding of the mind, which will soon pass. Mark fell into an anxious sleep. He woke up to voices. Apparently, there's someone else in the house. It turned out that Agnes and Bruno had called a psychiatrist for Mark. Hearing this, he went down to them and ran out of the house. Despite the rain, Mark ran to a taxi without shoes. The man was shocked when he realized he didn't recognize his home street. Mark tried to call his father or mother, but these numbers were not in service. Then Mark called the operator, who reported that these numbers were not listed in the database. Mark is in a panic. It turns out his mother has also disappeared. Mark makes a desperate decision and calls his wife, asking her to come for him. Taking advantage of the fact that her and Bruno had left the house, he returned, put on his shoes, and took his passport. Mark went to the airport and bought a ticket to Hong Kong. In just a few hours, he was in China. This is how Mark hoped to escape from the distorted reality. Now, he was in a huge, unfamiliar city of a foreign country. Mark has money so he was able to find temporary housing. After some time, Mark decided to send a postcard to his wife so she knew that he was okay. For several months, Mark lived in China. Finally, he decided to return home, hoping that this madness had now stopped. However, at the last moment, Mark got scared and changed his mind. He still wasn't ready to go back. Mark stayed in Hong Kong, having no idea what was happening in his hometown. Perhaps Agnes had also disappeared. This is what Mark fears the most. So day after day passes. Mark lives in ignorance, not knowing how to get out of this situation. He wants to go home, but perhaps there is no home anymore. Right now, Mark has no way of understanding whether his perception of reality differs because there's not a single familiar person around him. One day, he threw his cell phone into the river. It was the last thing that connected him to home. Mark continues his aimless existence in Hong Kong. He found himself new housing, not knowing how long he would stay here. At some point, Mark found that postcard addressed to his wife in his jacket. It turns out he never sent it. Some more time passed. Mark grew a mustache again. Due to the language barrier, he can't communicate with anyone. One day, Mark noticed that someone had taken the keys to his room. The elderly concierge told Mark that his wife had arrived. This statement threw the man into a panic. Agnes was indeed in the room, behaving as if she had been in China with her husband all this time. Mark realized that the madness continued. He wanted to shave off his mustache, but didn't get around to it because his wife asked where he got this terrible jacket. Agnes seemed to have never bought it for her husband. Mark surreptitiously pulled the postcard out of his jacket pocket. The man understood that wherever he ran, this madness would follow him everywhere. Tomorrow, the couple are going back to France. It turns out that Serge and Nadia are also in China. 
Agnes, of course, no longer denies their existence. Mark hugged his wife, wishing she would always stay by his side. He discreetly threw out the postcard. In the room, Agnes was packing things as they have a flight tomorrow. Meanwhile, Mark shaved his mustache. Agnes even liked it. The spouses fell asleep. The postcard is floating in the water. 